Hi, Louisa. So thank you for letting me interview you. So could you please just introduce yourself and that can include your name, your major, any applicable minors, your pre-professional track and the school you attend. Okay, so my name is Lisa Drummond. I just finished my freshman year at the University of Washington Seattle campus. My current intended major is environmental studies, which I'm really excited about. I've liked classes so far. Um, I'm currently pursuing two minors. So my first minor that I'm kind of focusing on most is Spanish, really excited. And then my second one is diversity. Um, yeah, that's kind of it for me with college stuff right now. That's great. And what do you intend to do after you graduate? Um, right now, I really want to make sure I get um, like focused with internships to really focus what I want to do. But my current plans are hopefully to possibly work at like state level government. And then if I get involved enough, maybe work my way up to federal. I just want to be involved in um, legislation and like make sure I have a platform that I can speak my voice and then also help give a platform to other people. That sounds amazing. So what made you want to major in environmental studies? And what made you also want to minor in Spanish and diversity? Yeah, so it's actually kind of a really random story, but one of like my kind of pet peeves is when people like complain about something that they can obviously execute a solution to. And so it's like a little bit more of a broader scale for this, but I remember my senior year, I like have this folder on my Instagram where I like save environmental issues. And all day long, I would just complain to my family. I was like, this is so ridiculous. Like, why isn't anything being done about this? Da, 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 da. And then one day I remember I was complaining about something and I sat there and I was like, I'm doing exactly what irritates me. It's just like, I have the opportunity and the blessing to be able to go to college and I can like use that time to educate myself and like be the change I want to see and so it was kind of in my senior year like really late that I decided I wanted to do environmental studies um, and then I guess kind of a distinction between environmental studies and environmental science because um, there's like a little bit of importance to that is environmental studies is more of a focus on like the human interaction with the environment um, so I think I was gravitating more towards the human aspect of it as well just because I think it's important that that's something that's focused on um, and then Spanish, obviously, so I'm also part Mexican, and so I have a lot of family that speak Spanish, and so one of the main reasons I want to learn Spanish and become more proficient in it is just to communicate with my family, and obviously, like, the people I care about, but I also think it's a really important language just to know, and it kind of, like, just really catches me off guard because my abuelita is an interpreter, and she's, like, called into hospitals to translate for psychologists or psychiatrists, and it's, like, a third person should not be involved in something as personal as, you know, mental health issues. And so I think just kind of like that big gap, there needs to be something done about that because that's really personal. And then diversity, it's just, especially at UW, like the amount of classes that they have, there's just so much I have to learn about other people and other systems. That's kind of why I wanted to get that degree. It's not so much about the minor itself, but more I really value a lot of the content in those classes. No, yeah, for sure. I love all your reasoning. They all seem super like personal and just seem like to help better the community. I just, I love it so much, Lisa. Um, so what made you want to attend the University of Washington for um, environmental studies and Spanish? Yeah, so um, honestly, the main reasons I went to UW when it came down to it was money and location. Uh, those are kind of like the main two factors, just because I also got into UCSB and I was really excited to go to that school, but you know, it's pretty expensive. UCSB schools are kind of out there. And while I do have family in California, it just felt too far away, especially when you like factor in the added cost to come back for like plane rides and whatnot. So like, I want to call it education, but I don't really go into that much debt because of it, you know? And UW is a great school. And honestly, it's better for me to have gone there, especially with my major of environmental studies, because it's like, UW, especially the Seattle campus is what I can speak to, is one of like the top schools in the nation for environmental sciences and just kind of like the environmental department. So I'm really lucky to go to a school and be involved in that college at like, that's so well known and really well respected. So that's kind of like an after the fact thing that happens, but I also wanted to make sure I went to a school that encompassed my interests. And that's like, I think another big thing for me is I wanted to go to USDSB for psychology is kind of what I was looking into. But I think something that really factored into where I picked my school 
was I wanted to make sure it had all the things that I was interested in just in case I decided I wanted to change my mind. So I think that was like a big factor in it as well. Yeah, that seems incredibly reasonable, especially like when we're so young, we don't know what exactly we want to do yet for sure. That makes total sense. Um, quick question. Did you do Running Start? No, I, I have like a quick story on that. It's a little bit, it's kind of funny because I actually wanted to do it my freshman and sophomore year and my mom and my abuelita were like, no, like Luisa, you should do like the high school experience, like da 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 da. And then of course, once it's too late, I'm in my junior year, my mom is like, you should have done Running Start. <laughs> and so that made me so mad. I was like, are you kidding me? Like that would have been... Oh, so frustrating but honestly I think I'm glad I didn't do running start like like as of right now it's kind of frustrating but I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted to go to school and so I don't know if my credits would have transferred from running start so I think I'm glad I got the experience of being in high school and being around my friends and like doing other types of leadership things and like really bonding with my teachers as opposed to kind of getting a head start that way because I think I'm still kind of trying to figure stuff out so it worked out in the end, I think. No, oh, yeah, it seems that you're totally happy where you are right now. So that's glad to hear. Um, another question I have for you is about UW. So currently, how do you, well, not currently because we had the last quarter um, online, but like back in person, um, how did you like UW and your experience as a Husky? Honestly, I had like a really good experience. I think especially I heard this like before I went in, but for such a big school, like how it can really be overwhelming. But I do think UW does a really good job of making it feel like a more tight knit community with like quiz sections and things like that. I definitely think those are really helpful. Um, I think another tough thing about kind of, especially about being a freshman is just all these like resources and opportunities being thrown at you can be really overwhelming. But like when you take advantage of the resources that are presented to you, I think UW does an amazing job of that. Obviously, I don't have anything to compare it to, but I think if you ask for help when you need it, that's something that has really helped me is just like if I needed something going to an advisor or asking like an upperclassman friend, um, I definitely think like a part of my good experience was just the fact that I took advantage of the resources that were presented to me. No, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And you just mentioned it. So then because you talked to like advisors and faculty, would you say that then UW's academic support is really good? Um, I'm, okay, well, yes and no. I'm not really sure because like, I'm also in the OMAD program. So I have access, which is Office of Minority and Diversity Affairs. So I have access to a more specific counselor so I don't know how they handle other issues. I didn't go to my general academics counselor. I wish I did. Um, I should have taken advantage of that as well. Um, so I think that's definitely something I'm gonna do next year. Uh, but they have like really good tutoring centers. Like I went to Clue every night and when I was in chemistry and the tutors are really nice and they have like a good system set up. So I do think they have a lot of like valuable ways that you can get help. It's just knowing where to look and then also taking advantage of them. Again, it's just, making sure that you're looking at all the resources that are presented to you. And I think I definitely need to do a better job of that next year as well, because before we had to come back home, I was planning on setting an appointment with the environmental studies, like academic advisor, because I wanted to talk to her more about like the path I was taking in the, and what that would entail. So I definitely think they have opportunities for support. It's just a matter of whether or not you, you yourself reach out, set an appointment and ask questions. Oh yeah, no, that makes sense. And thank you for sharing your experience with uh, UW's like academic support and everything. And uh, for mentioning the OMED program. Um, so I know you lived in the dorms your freshman year. How is that experience for you? And when concerning like roommates and stuff, I know a lot of people get very anxious about that. Um, do you have any advice for choosing roommates? Like, would you do random? Would you go with somebody you knew in high school? Just like share your experience. Yeah, that is kind of tough because I got super lucky with my roommate because okay random story I don't know if I ever told you this but my roommate was actually one of my friends from kindergarten and it was like really random yeah I know I got so lucky I absolutely adore her I'm living with her again next year in a house but um so we met each other in kindergarten and we kind of were we were never like best best friends after that because I had to switch schools 
but we like came back, we both got into UW, and we were kind of talking one day, and we're like, do you want to live with a random person? No, do you? Why don't we live together? So that kind of like definitely took the stress off it, but before that, I was going to do a random person. Um, I think it's definitely a hard choice because you you can't really, you can only know someone so much over the phone. Um, so I guess like a good opportunity is if you're close to the person, you have to do random, try to like, I know right, hard, like right now it's kind of hard, um, but if you have the opportunity to like meet up with them in person, um, try to like set bonding things to see if you're actually gonna like this person because I mean, you're gonna be living with them. And especially in a dorm, like there's a difference between having two separate rooms and then having your bed in the same room. Um, and so that's definitely, you really get to know someone and it can be like a very like intimate experience. So definitely pick wisely. Um, but I would say it's just, I don't know. Like if you get stuck with somebody that you don't necessarily get along with, you'll make friends along the way that will make it better for sure. And there's definitely like, you can talk to your RA, you can talk to like the housing community. Um, I think, I don't know, that's a hard one. Cause I got so lucky living with um, my friends, but I will say about living with friends, she's probably one of the only exceptions I would make, especially since you can be locked into a contract. So if you are going to live with a friend, make sure you really talk about like hard topics. Don't just jump into it expecting that you're going to get along perfectly well. You definitely need to talk about like different lifestyle choices, about like partners coming over and like set up systems. You know, you have to make sure that you're communicating with that person or it can turn real bad. So I think, I guess the main piece of advice would be communication and making sure you're upfront and honest with what you want with the person you're going to be living with. Yeah, I think living with somebody and just being friends with them is a totally like different experience. But you sound like you got super lucky with living with your friend from kindergarten, which you did <laughs> not tell me about. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and then another question I have for you is, what were some extracurriculars that you were participating in at the university and or what uh, extracurricular activities are you planning to do next year? Yeah, so like I said, UW has a lot of great resources. So I think the main program I was involved in is called UWL, UW Leaders. It's part of ASU Dub, so it's a action commission type of deal. And it's was probably one of the best choices I ever made. Like I applied to it last minute because one of my friends was in the program and she was like, Louisa, you should totally do this. I think you'd be great. So I was like, okay. But UW Leaders, I went in as a mentee. So I had a mentor who I absolutely adore. She's absolutely lovely. And it was just probably one of the best environments I've ever been a part of. Like it's just, we do workshops, you get to know other people, we go on retreats. Um, I, I, it was just a great community. I met like a majority of my roommates for next year there. Um, I've made a lot of good connections, people that I think even if I don't stay in contact with them for the rest of my life, I'll definitely remember some of the things that they helped me out with. There's just like so many kind and open people in that program that you'll definitely meet somebody that you click with um, if you choose to be a part of it. And it was just like a really valuable experience to me because there's so many different people. Like they do a really good job of making sure there's people from different backgrounds with different interests. And so if you have a question about something that you're just not familiar with, the likelihood of somebody knowing a lot about that topic is very high in this group. So that was like a really cool aspect of it. Um, something else is like, they do like mentoring for like college, career wise, um, like, or if you wanna like work on yourself personally, they really just do a lot of like good things that way. So that's another reason I really like it. Um, and then another group I was a part of was the Women's Action Commission, and that's another ASU, Dub. yeah, it was pretty cool, I really liked it, it's another ASU Dub entity. Um, I wish I was more involved than I was, because I went to volunteer meetings a lot more in fall quarter, and then I kind of got overwhelmed with classes during my winter quarter, so I didn't go as much. Um, but I would definitely recommend if you are a women's rights advocate, it was really cool, or if you want to give like input on something, it was a really cool group to be a part of, a lot of like strong women identifying people. Um, I, it was really great. Like I was super sad because like being home during spring quarter, there was an event that I was going to like try to help out with more. And then since everything got canceled, I didn't get to, which was so sad. Um, 
Yeah, and then another thing they do that's really cool, they just started this year, the director, Julia, and then uh, assistant director, Amber, they do the monologues. And so originally that's like this type of performative thing where like people, like women identifying people, gets to read poetry, sing a song, dance, like it's this like performance. But this year they turned it into a magazine. So we have like a platform to share like women's work, which was I the coolest idea that I've ever seen. It's so cool. Um, they have it like linked in their Instagram. So I would recommend checking it out. I have a piece in there, which was really cool. I got published. Yeah. And so they like take like all this different types of art, which was really awesome. Um, and then last thing I did was I was in an environmental studies class my first quarter and you get to do, I don't remember what it's called exactly, but they have a whole center for it on campus. Um, and it was like, you do a volunteer thing instead of like this final assignment that we did. So throughout the quarter, I went to this place called um, TILF and they're like a nonprofit organization in Washington and I worked with the Good Food Bag program. So essentially what we did is I would do like manual labor. I like weigh stuff, pack stuff, we'd send it out, pack a truck. Um, and it was to communities that qualified economically speaking and to preschools. And basically it was like local and fresh organic produce that we would send out to these communities. And there would be like, lists of what was in the bag, what, um, like what you could use it for, different recipes, and I just, it was so cool to be a part of. I really liked my supervisors, and I thought it was a really cool opportunity, because it wasn't necessarily something on the UW campus, but it was something that I could get through, get to through them, and I definitely think it was a, like, an amazing opportunity, and I'll probably go back to that office to try to, like, see other opportunities that uh like they have because they do have a lot of like work you can do um like you can go through them to like work with uh preschools that's another thing that they do if you want to be like an education major or if that's something you're passionate about they have different things that you can do um it's in the mary gates building like in the back if you go so if that helps because i don't remember what it's called but it was a really cool opportunity <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing all that. It all sounds really amazing and you sound super passionate about that. And I will check out your um, little piece in the Women's Action, Women's Com Action Commission. Thank you. Yeah, I will, I will support you. And uh, so thank you for uh, sharing all that. So now we're going to transition a little bit more towards your college application process. Mm -hmm. So looking back at it, I know it was like two years ago almost, or like a year ago-ish. But um, personally, how did you feel about your college application process? Yeah, so I was like kind of thinking about that before we did like the interview. Um, I don't know, it was kind of like a weird time. It can be very overwhelming because you're like, well, what do I say? How many do I apply to? Well, then there's like an application fee and like all this stuff is going on. And I was like thinking about what like I would have wanted during that time or kind of like, I guess, Sure, it was overwhelming is kind of how my experience was. Um, and it was that you just have to jump in and do it or you're never gonna get it done. That was what I had to do is I was just like, I just had to get on it and start doing it. And then it was a lot easier because you can reuse your essays for other applications, you can modify them. So I would recommend if you're working on an application, never delete anything that you're working on. Even if you're editing something, just make another copy in like a Google doc or save it on a thumb drive, just so you have like, those variations of writing so if they're more applicable to like another essay stuff like that and then you can refer back to them as well or like different word count um so I think that's kind of like one of the major lessons I learned but I think something that would have been really helpful I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself here with the question no no, no. keep talking it's okay it's okay okay but um I just because there was a lot of resources at my high school but I don't really think they were presented in the right way. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, they kind of talked about it on and off, but it's just one of those things that where people don't wanna like hold your hand through the process, but for some people, including myself, that's what you need because it's a really big life choice. You know, if you're gonna spend money on something like this, you have to fill out FAFSA at a certain time. If you don't fill it out, then that's a whole mess. If you don't fill out this college application in a certain deadline, and so I just think something that I really missed, and okay, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm going to talk about this because I thought this was like something really exciting for me is when I was kind of done with my applications, I started working on this thing called, it was peer-to-peer -peer college advice. 
So it was kind of like a program I started with one of my teachers that I trusted. And basically it was for seniors. We were gonna work on it for seniors in the fall. So it was just gonna be students that kind of had the resources to get a head start on their applications or maybe like their parents had gone to college. So they were a little bit better well equipped to answer some application questions. And they would help students that were still working on college applications. But because they had just done, like for me, for example, one of my friends, Justin, adore him, love him so much. He was just like really overwhelmed and didn't know where to start. And so like, I just, we just sat down and we opened up op ways to do applications and we just went through everything because it's just one of those things that I know for myself because I can get kind of anxious with things that are like are important decisions. It's like, it's something like as simple as the wording of a question can throw you off and you're like, well, what does that mean? How am I supposed to answer that? And so I think having somebody by you while you're doing your application or at least reassuring you be like, it's okay, we'll review it after, like just do what you feel is best and then you can review it later. So just having someone there to support you and tell you like, oh, this is the right thing to do, this is the wrong thing to do, but ultimately just answer it how you feel best is something that is missing from a lot of like people applying to college applications and everything like that. That is all beautiful advice. And don't worry, you did not get ahead or anything. But okay. that was actually like really new advice that I haven't heard from that I haven't heard of before. So thank you for yeah. sharing a little bit. Um, if you remember, how long did you think your entire like process took? And that can include like researching for colleges and things like that. Um that's a little bit of a tricky question because at my school we do have this thing called advisory and while it's sometimes it was pointless for a majority of the students that took it it like was from freshman to senior year and I always thought it was really weird we like it was like this class that we do like every Wednesday I know weird right so it was like but honestly I just felt it was now that I look back on it more it felt pointless because we were focusing so heavily on like career stuff but we would skip over what you needed to do to get there. Like we didn't really talk about like vocational school or going into the military or doing community college or university before we talked about doing anything career wise that I can remember. And I had a really good advisor, like as opposed to a lot of the other students who just hated advisory, I got really lucky. And so it was just like kind of one of those things that was really weird. Um, so we talked about college on and off throughout those four years, but I think the main time I focused on it, the main process was mostly in my junior year for research is what happened. So I would say like on and off throughout my junior year and my like the summer, but the bulk of my time like applying to colleges was probably three, three months because it was kind of like during summer and then into like asking for letters of recommendation from my teachers or getting advice on essays that kind of like seeped into the school year as well. So like three, four months, I'd say is what the bulk of my time for college. No, yeah, that is really weird for what your school did. But um, thank you for sharing your like little timeline despite it being yeah. <laughs> kind of weird with your school. Um, and so another thing, and I don't know if you mentioned it before, but just tell me um, again, I'm so sorry if you are going to repeat information, but if you could change um, anything about the college application process in general, or like your college application process specifically, what would it be? When you say that, do you mean like, for me, what would I change about how I applied to colleges or how the application process works for students? Um, either or whatever, whichever one you find is like, you feel most comfortable talking about or whatever you want to talk about more? Um, I can address both, but I think for me personally, um, I think it went pretty well for me, honestly. Like, I remember being stressed out, but I think I would start sooner maybe. Just like make more of an effort to really thoroughly answer the essay questions um, and kind of get ahead of it or like apply to more of the platforms where it reached out to multiple schools because I didn't really do that as much. I'm like more focused on schools that had like um, applications online instead of going through like one of those like, common apps. I think you can apply to that and it goes to multiple schools you can select them which I did do uh, but it can just be tricky with application fees and stuff. Um, oh you know what okay I did want to talk about this a big thing for me is talking about money with whoever is going to help you pay for college if you are able to get that assistance. 
Um, for me, it was my parents. And I definitely think something that would have helped in my college application process or getting ready for college is talking about money. And I know that's a really hard topic to talk about in a lot of households or however you're doing it, but it, it's a conversation that's needed because like, how are you gonna, that's how you're getting your education is essentially you have to pay for it. Um, so I think making sure that I kept that more like focused instead of being afraid to talk about it would have helped my college application process because then I would have been more aware of what options I had and just making sure there was open communication with my parents about scholarships and money. So, oh, and also on that, so that's what I say about that, but also definitely making sure I don't burn myself out for college applications, but also applying for a, like plenty of scholarships. Cause I think that's something that happened to me is I needed to prioritize where I put my energy cause I focused so much of it in college applications, but not near enough on scholarships. Like I definitely should have applied to more scholarships than I did, but it's hard because it can be really overwhelming because there's just so many things you have to apply for, so many essays you have to write in a certain time period, so many letters of rec you have to get. So I just think being kinder to yourself with your time management and making sure that you're like, okay, this is what I need to do. This is when I need to have done. I need to give a certain amount of energy to applying to this college. It's my backup, so you know, we'll see. Or like making sure, but I need, I really want this scholarship. So I have to make sure like I get this essay reviewed like plenty of times. I think with anything you do in a college process or really just in life is making sure you ask for help when you need it. So just kind of like making sure you do things like that. So talk to people about money, give yourself some time and make sure you apply to scholarships if you need it because you need to make sure you know where you're putting your energy. And then I guess aside from me personally, and just like the actual college application process, like kind of what I said already, I do think there needs to be more of a focus on, just for my school, at least I guess it's still a little bit personally, but there should be more education on the different types of me like methods of education itself. Just making sure that there's not all this focus on applying to universities, but letting students know it's okay to go into trade school or like one of my friends, she decided that she wanted to do cosmetology. A lot of students don't like learn stuff like that about themselves until later because they don't know what's available to them. So I think maybe just making sure that there's, and I know that's kind of like the main thing that we're talking about is universities, but I do think there should be more education on like the options available to students and there should be more of an effort from I guess high schools or other programs, letting students know that it's cool that you want to go to like a university or that's totally a valuable option, but there's other things that are available to you as well. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And thank you for sharing your little bit of advice about what you think the whole college application process should, should be changed. I agree, like there should be a lot more education on the different routes and everything because most people believe there's only one traditional route and that is yeah. not the case. Yeah. And uh, thank you for that. And finally, the last question is, and you answered this throughout the interview, but if you have like any more information you'd like to mm -hmm. express, like go for it. But if not, it's totally fine. Um, if you could give advice to high school students right now, um, what would it be? And that can be about like a, going to UW, like college life itself, or like the college application process, whatever you find applicable. Um not to get carried away because I feel like sometimes I can talk a lot. Um, I guess I guess what I said I think is a really big deal about knowing that there are other options available to you and I know that can be really hard especially if you have pressure from parents or other guardians or whoever you like maybe look up to wanting you to do a certain thing and that can be really hard to get away from wanting to do that but it's totally okay and it's totally valid to know that you can do something else with your life and you don't have to go to university. And if you want to, that's totally okay. And you can make that work and make sure that you talk to the people that you need to, to make sure that happens for you. And also you don't have to go to university immediately out of high school. If you wanna do something else, if you wanna take a gap year, I had a friend, she got the opportunity to go to uh, Sweden before she went to another university. So if you wanna save up money and do like travel abroad, totally do that. So I just think making sure that you know you can keep your options open is one of the main things that I would want 
to tell everyone is just don't feel pressured to do one thing. And I know that's easier said than done, but just making sure that you are open to other things that you can do with your life. Because even though you should like make sure that you take advantage of the now, you also have plenty of time to do things and you don't have to be like have a plan that's set in stone. That's something that I would really do, especially when I was younger, I would stress myself out. I'd be like, I have to be here by this time. I have to do this, I have to do this. And it's, you're gonna change, you're gonna learn new things and that's totally okay. You just have to do your best in that moment. And I think that's probably one of the most valuable things. And then one more thing stemming from that is make sure that you're in touch with yourself and that you ask for help when you need it. Because especially when it comes to mental health, as I think that's something that's not as focused on, like I definitely think a lot of people put physical health first because sometimes that could be so much more obvious, but your mental health is just as important. And we're really lucky at a school like UW, you, we have free counseling services. Um, and even I would say like my first, this is a little bit more personal, but like my first whole fall quarter, I was like, I don't need to go to a counselor. Like I'm fine. Like I'm doing great. I feel great. And then like I kind of crashed my winter quarter and I should have, even though I felt fine, I still should have made the effort to talk to someone and make sure I was doing okay and at least have somebody that I checked in with. So there's no shame in admitting that you need help or that you just need somebody to talk to. That's totally valid. I think having a counselor, at least trying that route is something everybody should try at least once in their life. And that's kind of a blanket statement, but I do think counselors are very valuable people and it's really good to know how in touch you are with your own emotions, where you are in your life, and if you need any help. So I guess those are kind of like the two main things I would say. That was all very beautiful. And that concludes our interview. So thank you, Marisa, again for letting me interview about this entire process. Yes, you're welcome, Trinity.